Okay, so in this discussion, we're going to talk about horizontal angles. And again, we, uh, we mentioned this uh, several chapters back when we talked about where the angles are found. Well, they're found in the horizontal plane. So now we get to discuss you know, the, uh, the actual measurement of them and, and describing what they, what they are and uh, their, uh, the magnitude of them. So the first thing we need to understand about an angle is it has three parts to it. There's a reference, which we call a backside. There's the direction of turning, whether you're going to go to the right or to the left um, from, from where you're standing and going. And then there's an angular distance, and that angular distance is always, like we've talked before, is in degrees, minutes, and seconds. So first off, let's talk about your reference. Let's talk about a reference line. What is it? Well, typically everything you've always known is, well, we, we refer everything, angles, bearings, azimuths, anything is always generally referred to what north is. When, when you tell me you're going east, well, then I assume I know where north is because that's what your reference is. So you're going east or you're going south or west. Whatever it is, there is a reference line of which direction you are going. So we can call north many different things. One thing we can call it is geodetic, which is true north. That goes up to the pole, the mean location over the poles are. Uh, we can use astronomic north. That is the instantaneous location where the pole is, you know, based upon the, uh, the rotation and what you're looking from the, uh, from the stars. There's also a thing called magnetic north, which is in a totally different place of where the poles are. That's where the actual magnetic center is up there and what, uh, what draws the, uh, the compass up to there. Uh, another one would be grid north, and some of the we're going to get talking about these as as we go along. But just so you can understand and see that there's several things that are constituted to be north, or what we're calling just to be our reference. We have record. Uh, so if I told you go south down the street, well then your reference then is south going along that street, regardless of if, if it really is a, a known direction or not. That's what you're calling it doesn't matter what you call it. You've called it south, so it's south. Assumed, that's just any random, uh, any random look, um, call out, what you, whatever you want to call it. You say, hey, I want to go down the street, down shields. Then you know exactly where you're going. You're going to turn right, you're going to go down shields. Now from shields, if you're going to say turn left. So your reference then is along shields. Okay, now as we talk about, uh, so th that's a reference. Let's talk about now the direction of turning and how that actually re reflects and, and what we actually mean by that. All right, uh, typically when we talk about direction, we talk about how we're going around a certain loop or certain direction when we're actually doing some survey work and measuring angles. Typically you'll see, and what I will use, especially the nomenclature in this class, you'll see that my direction I'm going is in the increasing terms of my letters. So A, B, C, D, E, F, that is my direction. So I'm going to go around this way. Um, then here in this other example, I'm still going A, B, C, D, F, but you can see this time I'm going in a clockwise direction. Okay, so that's typically how it, uh, how it works. So we have what are called right and left angles. So let's, uh, let's get a little better understanding of really what that means. If you look over here on the left-hand side, this one, we were going around the loop in a counterclockwise direction. So how does it mean an angle right? What it means is you come over here and you set your instrument up right there. Now remember what I said is you needed a reference, something to reference by. So what you do, you point your eyeball right here in this direction. So now you're looking down the line this way, and this is now your reference. So now, from your reference line, F is my reference, and A to F is my reference. Now I'm going to go look towards something and measure an angle between the reference line and what I'm, well, I'm my point of interest. So therefore, you see that I'm now turning to the right. I'm turning the instrument to the right, which gives me an actual uh, angle measurement inside there. So that's an example of angles to the right. So when I set up on B right here, I look down the line back where I came from and then I'm going to make an angle to the right and look up towards C. And same thing as you go all the way around. Now left is just the opposite. So if I'm 
set up here on A. Now what direction am I going? Okay, remember, I'm going this way. I'm going clockwise. So that means I'm going to look back to F again. Look over there. You're physically looking that way. Now the shortest path and distance to look towards B is turning yourself to the left. So that then is constituted to be an angle to the left. Based upon my direction, my naming of my, uh, my angles, and then uh, based upon as I turn to wherever I'm facing, or whatever point of interest it is, I measure an angle. <clears throat> so the distance, the angle distance, so that's going to be measured in degrees, minutes, seconds. So we've already talked before how to convert that from decimal degrees to degrees, minutes, seconds, or from radians to degrees, minutes, seconds, whatever it is. It's an angle, and we're going to measure it somehow, and we will use uh, DMS. Okay, degrees we've talked before, it's an integer. It goes uh, anywhere from 0 degrees to 360 degrees. Um, we also talk about minutes, it's also an integer, which also goes from 0 minutes up to 60 minutes. Seconds then are decimal seconds, which go from 0 to 60, but that could be 0 to 59.99999, whatever. If you look right up here, see, integer, integer, and then here is your decimal seconds. So take, for example, 110 degrees, 56 minutes, 21 seconds. Perfect. So another example, so you can see again, integer, integer, and this one is an integer because I went to the near second. Now you look at my next example, 0 degrees, 25 minutes, 21.36428 seconds. So again, decimal seconds, integer minutes, integer degrees. Here's an example then of, uh, again, how close I can get to be all the way up to 360 degrees. And you can do the opposite. Again, integer, integer, and then decimal seconds. Last example there, 45 degrees, 60 minutes, 25.23 seconds. And this, wherever I'm ending, that all just depends on the precision and what it is I'm looking for. Now one thing I want to show you, let's go back right here. On this example here, See how I have 45 degrees, 60, 25.23. If you look back what I set up here, integer 0 to 60, well it's actually 0, but it has to be less than 60. 0 for the seconds, also less than 60. So if I sub 45 degrees, 60 minutes, 25.23 seconds, this 60, we will never write it that way. Why? Because there's 60 minutes in a degree. So how are we going to write it? You're actually going to write it then 46 degrees, 0 minutes, 25.23 seconds. So now let's talk about some checks you can have. We talked before, um, you know, during our error propagation, we gave examples of I need a, for my standard deviation can only be um, so big, that way my error isn't too much, depending on the number of angles inside my, my closed polygon. Well, it's another check. So if I made a bunch of measurements on the inside and I want to make sure all the angles are adding up right, well, this is the way you can check it. So the sum of the interior angles will be n minus 2 times 180 degrees. Sum of the exterior angles of a closed polygon, and again, these are closed polygons, okay? That doesn't work if it's opened. If it's just a line, it doesn't work. It has to be a polygon. Sum of the exterior, n plus 2 times 180. So let's, uh, let's take a look so we can understand this better. So we said the interior sum is n minus 2 times 180. So how many angles do I have? I have 6 angles. So 6 minus 2 times 180 should equal 720 degrees. So let's just check it. Add up all the sum of the interior angles, A through F. Uh, here's your, all your numbers that you have. And again, these angles are just to the nearest minute, but it should still work out. So if you add all those up, you're going to find that it adds right up to 720 degrees. Now... What I show here, uh, these are the complementary angles to those. These are the exterior angles at every, um, every angle. So exterior sum, we said, was n plus 2 times 180. Again, 6 plus 2, uh, 6 angles. So 6 plus 2 times 180 would be 1440. 
So now if you add up all those complementary angles, which I just showed you there, these then also add up to 1440. So you can see that what I was telling you was right, Be, uh, that, that everything works out with your uh, exterior sum should have been here. That matches. 720 here and also matches. Okay, next thing we want to teach you about are what are called and what we call our deflection angles. <clears throat> okay, what they are, they're observed from the extension of a backside. What that means is, remember if I am going A, B, C, D, E, that's my direction of travel. Okay, now I'm standing on B, set up my instrument, I look back at A, that's my backside, that's my reference line. And what I do now is I turn myself 180 degrees. I turn 180 degrees this way. Now I'm looking just backwards. So this is what I mean by an extension of our backside through me, through the instrument. And then I turn an angle to my point of interest, which is C over here. So what it is, it's a complementary angle to our forward direction angle. Right, so if this is one angle here, so say that was 95, obviously then this will be 85 degrees. So it's complementary there. All right, these deflection angles can be either rights or lefts. And again, it's all based upon the direction that you're looking at it. So if you take back this example here, remember I looked at A, turned myself 180 degrees, extended that back sight through me, and then I turned myself to the right to look at C. So this would be then a deflection angle to the right. A deflection angle of 85 degrees to the right. You can't just tell me it's a deflection angle of 85 degrees. You have to actually give it a degree, a value, uh, for the, uh, the degree of the angle. And you also have to tell me a direction, whether it's to the right or whether it's to the left. <clears throat> and as you go through here, you can see the example that this is also an example of a closed traverse. This is a geometrically closed traverse, but we're starting on a known location. We're ending up here on a known location. So here in this example, let's erase this information here so it's not in the way. You can see that is just an angle to the left. So if I was at B and I looked at A as my reference, and then I'm going towards C, that is an angle to the left. However, if I want a deflection angle, remember extension of my backside as it goes through me, and then turn myself to the right, so that's a deflection angle to the right. Here at point C, that would be an angle to the right and giving me a deflection angle to the left. D, that's an angle to the left and then a deflection angle to the right. Again, set up, know where you're at, use this as your reference line, and then I turned to the left. Deflection angle, use this as my reference. Turn myself 180 degrees, so now I'm looking the opposite direction. And then I turn myself to the right to look over here at E.